Hi, and welcome. This is this is me. I'm Ethan, the college essay guy. If you've never met me before, I like to talk about snacks and things that blow my mind. My friend Andy and I, Andy who works with me, we call these grounding thoughts, and they're totally not grounding thoughts. Um, but on this session today, well, let me, should I intro myself? Yeah, I'll intro myself, and then I'll tell you what we're going to talk about. So I've been thinking about college essays and applications since 2003, pretty consistently. I took a little break for grad school, but this is what I spent a lot of time working on and thinking about. And I spent some time in this room, which I know totally looks like a sauna, especially if I like don't show you the ceiling. So I want to like give you context that this is just like my weird back house. Um, but um, I spent a lot of time in this room thinking about college essays and creating resources for students and counselors to make the process easier. And that's what we're going to get into today. And um, what else should you know about me? If you really knew me, you would know that I, uh, that I, was licensed in hypnotherapy because I'm really into, I don't know, I'm kind of interested in the ways that our brain works and the, the parts of our brains that we understand, the parts of our brains we don't understand, which is most of it, right? Um, what else? I went to Northwestern University and I love words. I love language. I love teaching. This is my happy place for the next hour. Um, and I love my wife and I love my daughter. Those are some things about me. Okay. Um, so what we're gonna talk about today is how to write an awesome personal statement. In fact, I shouldn't say awesome, I should say outstanding because I like this word because it's like how to stand out on your personal statement is what we're gonna get into. And I'm gonna start off with like, what is the purpose of it? I'm gonna show you, take you through a couple exercises because I really like to be hands-on. If you're a counselor, actually, let's do a quick poll. Stevie, will you throw up? Stevie is standing by, she's my support today. Will you throw up a quick poll just asking folks if you are a student, parent, or counselor or other? And you can throw it in the chat box if you are an other. <laughs> Um, and, um, that would be, that would be awesome. Cause I'd love to hear who's here, hear who's here. Um, we're going to talk about core values. You're, it's hard to get off a webinar with me without hearing something about core values. And uh, I'm going to share with you a couple awesome personal statement examples. Can you tell I'm glancing at my notes? Like I'm looking at you here. And then I look down at my notes. Um, I, let me just show you my notes in the spirit of transparency. Um, let me just show you what I'm looking at. This is what I'm like legit looking at. Here's my Google doc with my notes. Um, this is just what I said I would cover. Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple topics to potentially avoid. There are some ones that I, I don't like to tell students like don't write about a thing, but some things I do like to say don't write about that thing. Um, and I'll tell you why. And then I'm going to do a quick PSA that's like less than um, like a minute and a half for I've got a couple courses coming up this summer. And then we're going to get to your questions. In fact, Stevie is going to put your name in the question right here because it kind of gets rowdy in the chat box when we get above a thousand folks. So part two that's on Thursday, is we're going to talk about how to create an outstanding college application. And I'm going to use, every time I say college application, I'm going to do that kind of faux, I don't know, I sound a little bit like Dr. Evil voice. I'm feeling a little silly. How are y'all feeling? Uh, you can let me know in the chat box if you want, although it's probably maybe overwhelming for some folks. Do, do you all get, in, do you get, like I have a little bit of an introversion, like impulse in me, and it gets overwhelmed sometimes in, when the chat gets crazy. Um, Jack is screaming. Can you give us some paper with all this info on it? Like a link or something, Jack, we're going to follow up with all the things. Don't worry. I got you, but you know, what would be useful if you want Just grab a sheet of paper, sheet of paper and a pen. And, um, and that'll be useful for this next exercise. You don't need a sheet of paper and a pen, but some folks like to, um, you know, some folks like to like to write old school. All right. What's the purpose of the personal statement? Anybody know? If I wish we were here in person, because there's like a 15 second delay. And so it's going to be awkward if I ask you and then like, wait, you can let me know in the chat box if you want. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you <laughs> because it's my webinar. So the purpose of the personal statement is to demonstrate, and you can write this down, Jack, your skills, qualities, values, and interests. Okay. What are your skills, qualities, values is going to be a big one that we're going to talk about and interests. And how do you figure out what your skills, values, qualities, and interests are? Wouldn't it be cool if there was just like, an exercise that you could do or something to figure out your your core values. Well, stand by. This is it. Oh, I should have like had it ready to go, but I didn't have it ready to go. Here's the first exercise. It's called the values exercise. So check this out. You can Google this. Google values exercise and you'll find this. But here's what I want to do. I want to spend two minutes and I want you to pick your top 10 values. And if you've done this before, bear with me. Count some, some of y'all just like you've done this before and you just like open a new tab because you're like, oh, I'm going to check my email. Don't check your email. Don't check your phone. Stay with me on this because values change and they shift. So 
two minutes. I'm going to start my timer, in fact. And I want to know what are your top 10 values, OK? Uh, you don't need to type in the chat box. Just do this on your own. You can type it somewhere if you want to. Um, three, two, one, and go. Two minutes, top 10 values. Don't worry, Jack, we'll follow up with the resources. Cool, we got 70% students in here, love it. We didn't put one for counselor. Oh, well, that's okay. I'm not mad at you, Stevie. <laughs> If you just joined us, take a look at this values list. We're basically making, we're identifying our top 10 values for today. What are your top 10 values? I'm looking for my water. Oh, well. Not in order, just, just pick them. It's hard to, or, don't order them, that would take too long. You got about a minute left. Mom, you can pick, your, Jamie, you can pick your top 10 values. Don't do it for your student, do it for you. Do it for you. I know, I know, two minutes is totally not enough time. All right, time's up. I'll give you 10 more seconds in case you need it. Can you find 10? Okay. Now take your 10 and make it top five. What are your top five values? And I'm going to give you like 30 seconds. Three, two, one, go. Top five values. Do this for you. Top five. You don't. You can write them in the chat if you want, but I'm, I mean, really, I want you to keep. Just make sure you've got this somewhere. You've got this somewhere. All right. Ten seconds extra time. Top five. All right. Now top three. What are your top three values? You got 10 seconds. <laughs> if you just joined us, we're identifying our core values in about two and a half minutes. You got them? You got your top three? I like how it's got curiosity, empathy, helping others. Cool. Love it. All right. Can you pick a top? Can you pick a number one? Like, what is your top value for today? Not for all space and time, just for today. What do you got? Ooh, I love that you put initiative. Love, initiative, and justice. That's beautiful. What's your number one? Okay. One of the purposes of this whole personal statement game, and by game, I mean like this exercise, this enterprise, this thing that you're doing, is to demonstrate your core values. And there are so many ways to do it. And we're gonna go through a couple different ways right now. And again, sheet of paper and pen is useful here, but you don't have to do it. Um, but let's figure out how do some of these values manifest themselves in the world, okay? 
So here's a quick game that I love to play. It's got I love in the title. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for just a second. All right. So yeah, feel free to put it in the chat box. It's hard to read all the things. So if you're trying to track the chat box, you can stop now because it's hard to track when things are speeding by. Anyway, all right. So here's a game I wanna play with you. It, it, it lasts a minute and, and it can help you lead to potential personal statements. I'm gonna do three mini exercises and each of these takes about a minute. So here are three ways to find your personal statement topic in about three minutes. So if you're like, again, distracted or you're checking your phone, come back to me now, listen to me. And I will, I sometimes, I, I don't know, I'm putting other accents. I do not know what this one is. It's a little bit French. Okay. So this exercise is called I love and it works like this. I love um, um, the color blue. Could you tell? I love... Um, I love exercises that help me get to know people better. I love long conversations that go late into the night. I love uh, I love vocal fry, that thing that goes, uh, I love uh, the way my daughter plays. She's six, the way that she plays with, um, when I like do recordings, she like watches the wah, wah, wah thing go. Um, I don't, you probably don't know what I'm talking about there. I love music. I love jazz. I love 90s r and I love, um, I love rap. I love hip hop. I love um, I love good lighting. I love when the temperature is just right. Um, I love ping pong. I love um, learning a new board game. I love people who are super nerds for board games. Um, I love game houses. If you've ever seen one of these, I love um, my time's gonna run out. Okay, your turn for a minute on your own. I want you to make a list of things that you love. So you can write it down or you can type it, whichever floats your boat. And you got a minute. All right, what do you love? You got a minute. Three, two, one, go. Make a list of as many things that you love as you can think of. Time's up. All right. Exercise two. I know. What are some things you know a lot about? So I know a lot about college admissions. I know a lot about um, the voice, the way the voice works. I know a lot about theater. I know a lot about um, games. I know a lot about... I know a lot about what it's like growing up, uh, being the new kid. I know a lot about games that connect people. Um, I know a lot about, I know a lot about anxiety. I often feel anxious. I know a lot about, et cetera. Okay, you get the idea. That was 30 seconds, but I'm gonna give you a minute. Okay, a minute. What do you know? Diana's like, I love Zillow. That's awesome. That's like you at night, just like, right? With like the light on your face, just. Um, okay, so what do you know a lot about? Um, books, what is it? Make a list. One, two, three, you've got one minute, go. Things that you could go on and on about. You don't have to be an expert, just things you know a lot about.
All right, cool. Here's how to find your personal statement topic. Are you ready? Y'all, your personal statement topic can be about pretty much anything. Just to give you an example, if you pick something from your I love or I know list that you just made in two minutes, and heads up, there's another exercise coming in a second, it could be your personal statement topic. So for example, um, I know a lot about games. I'm going to pick games. I've picked games before for this, but it's, I think I just really want to write a personal statement on games. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm just writing the word games at the top of a piece of paper. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what's called a jellyfish. And this is a, a group of students in Washington at a school said that it looked kind of like a jellyfish. So I just went with it and I kind of like it. Okay. So here's my jellyfish and it looks kind of like this. All right. And um, what you're going to do inside, so I'm going to write games, which is the thing that I could, that I know a lot about that I love. And I'm going to see how many different values I can connect games to. So let me put up that values list again. And what I'm doing is I'm testing to see if this is going to be a good topic for me. So I could connect games to creativity. So I'm writing creativity in one of my circles because games bring out a lot of my creativity and they've made me more creative. You, they require a lot of creativity to create creating creativity. Um, games have taught me about, Ooh, there's so many culture. Oh yes. I love seeing different games across culture and cultures. And I love thinking about the ways that we communicate through games across cultures. Um, but I'm bum bum connection. I'm going to put connection plus vulnerability. Cause I feel like there are certain games that have taught me a lot about ways that you can be vulnerable that aren't like these head on, like how is your relationship with your father question? <laughs> I think games bring out a vulnerability in a cool way and they help us connect with one another. Ooh, family. I'm thinking about my family. You see what I'm doing here? You don't because I haven't shown you the paper yet. What I'm doing is I'm basically taking the, the topic games. I'm sorry, I know you can't read it. I should have totally had a Sharpie ready. And I'm basically listing my different values that I could connect it to, okay? So your turn now. I want you to pick a thing that you know a lot about or that you love and I want you to just give a one minute test to see how many different values you can connect it to. You can type this, you can just type the thing and then just list as many values as you think you could connect to. So like for games, I can connect to family and I probably have like a little story around that or a memory or an image, okay? So try this, try this right now. I wish I had my water, where's my water? I'm gonna look right here. Oh well. What is your thing and what what values could you connect it to? Some of you are gonna be like fly with this and you're gonna be like, yes. And some of you are gonna be like, uh, what, what are we doing? Pick another thing. If it's If you're having trouble, just pick a different thing and see how many values you can connect it to. If you just joined us, welcome. We're picking a thing that we love or know a lot about, and we're seeing how many different values we can connect it to. This is called the elasticity test. There we go, Maya's got a great one. LGBT history is something Maya knows a lot about and can connect it to the values of culture, history, representation, justice, compassion, and love. Awesome. Maya, are any of those your core values by any chance? Do this with just one thing, Michael. Don't do this with all the things. That would take way too long. Just pick one thing that you think might make an interesting topic. It's kind of cliche, in Anushka, to, to write about knowing a lot about being a third culture kid. It's just harder to stand out. So pick another one. You could do it just to try this exercise, but that's a somewhat common topic. Yes, it are, they are some of your core values. Isn't that cool? Love and justice. Awesome. Isn't that neat? I mean, maybe you knew that already, but it's like, you could probably write a pretty cool personal statement on it, okay? That's a lot of thinking for 4 a.m. Adja, thanks for being up at 4 a.m. for this. Decisive, okay, so F1, decisiveness, adaptability. Okay, take a look at what folks are putting in the chat box. Ballet connects to all these values for Tallulah, right? Running connects to all these things, okay. So test number one for your personal statement, potential personal statement topic is number one, is it elastic? What by elastic, I mean, is it stretchy enough to encompass a range of values? Because what's cool about this exercise is now I could write a personal statement. Like it'd probably start off with like me playing games in the living room, 
you know, a specific example, right, to draw our attention in. And then I would have something in my transition that would be like, games have taught me so much about the world. And so then the person, the reader's like, oh, or this is a personal statement about games. And I've, then they've taught this student. And I would talk about how games have connected me with my family on a deeper level. And that's one paragraph, right? And then also they've helped me develop more creativity. And I would probably connect it to other ways that I like being creative. And then I would connect it to, what did I write here? Culture and how culture is important in my life. So these are some of my core values, family, creativity, connection and vulnerability. So the first test is like, is it elastic? And if you connect to a bunch of different things, chances are you're gonna have a lot to say about that. And so it might make a cool topic, okay? The second thing that we're potentially looking for is, could you potentially find something that's somewhat uncommon? Now this isn't required. You could write an awesome personal statement, Audrey, on music or Lior on helping others. But the chances are that personal statement might blend in a little bit more with other personal statements on that topic, like helping others or music, unless you've got some specific details that help it to stand out. So I wanna give you all a specific example essay. Let me share my screen so that you can see how this turns into a potential topic. And then I'm gonna do another exercise with you. This is my choose your own adventure tool. I'll share more about it later. Um, we wanna go into the brainstorming section. We wanna go to the I love, I know path. All right, so this is one of seven methods. I'm not gonna get into all of them today. And here's a sample personal statement. And I wanna show you how this turns into an essay. So check this out. This is the food essay. Since 1941, my family has had an odd tradition. Now this is when he did this brainstorm, the thing that he knew a lot about was food. Three days a week, my great grandfather Pop brought home ribs. After dinner, he'd go around the table inspecting each plate, making sure each rib was stripped down to the bone. If you found one morsel, you couldn't be excused. Pop believed that before you could leave the table, you had to finish your ribs. This lesson has stuck with me. Whether I'm staying up until two in the morning to figure out the radius of convergence of a power series or identifying solutions to countless concerns issued by my school district, I strive to finish my ribs. But this is just one of the many lessons food has taught me. All right, so let's just pause and analyze this real quick. So in, if you look at his, if you were to look at his brainstorm, it's like food is here. And then the first thing here is, the example is whatever, what, I don't know, what value do you want to call this? Finishing your ribs. It's something like determination, right? Finishing what you started. And the example he's giving is this story that his grandfather used to tell. So that's here, this first. So the first one is like determination, food, which is kind of a weird connection. You wouldn't think that food is connected to determination, but sure enough, he's able to do it. And notice how he smuggles in these other sides of himself. Figure out the radius of convergence of a power series. I don't even know what that means. Um, or identifying solutions to countless concerns issued by my school district, flex. But he's weaving it in because, and this is how to be subtle, how to like subtly weave in other sides of you is connecting it to a value. And the value here is determination or whatever you wanna call it. Perseverance, persistence, tenacity, yes. Okay, and then look at his transition. But this is just one of the many lessons food has taught me. Pop, ah, now I know what this essay is about. During Thanksgiving, instead of going around the table to express thanks, my family writes notes on the tablecloth the same one for the past 26 years. You'll find thoughts from my dad, but only until 2004. Or corny jokes from my stepdad, but only until 2016. And you'll read family is everything from my great grandmother, Nan, but only until 2017. My family's far from, per you see there's like some nice like vulnerability here. There's like some mysterious stuff too, but that's another important quality of a personal statement. So core values are important and also vulnerability. My family's far from perfect, but it's in the presence of a tablecloth where time freezes and I begin to feel an unfamiliar sense of stability. Core value alert. It's where my brother Noah told my dad he loved him after six years of not communicating. Where mom sat next to dad without a lawyer by their side and where my family has gathered for every birthday at the same restaurant since I was four. So ritual, family, stability. Do you y'all feel these core values? In a great personal statement, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can just like highlight this. In a great personal statement, we should be able to see your core values, but it's not gonna be through naming them explicitly necessarily. It's through giving specific examples, moments, images, details that make those come to life for us. All right, let me read you one more paragraph. You kind of see how this is working. To me, eating means celebrating culture, people, life. And I celebrated Nan's life by trying a dish I feared since my first Passover, the filter fish, a stuffed seafood concoction. Some of y'all know what this is. I've never had gefilte fish personally. 
It's not the taste I remember clearly, but rather how it began a cascade of tasting other Jewish foods. See if you can spot the value. Chopped liver, beef tongue, pickled herring. In the time since I've realized gefilte fish is more than just the unfamiliar food tucked away in my great grandma's fridge. What is it? You ready? Value set up. It represents the opportunities that arise from trying new things. Okay, so now food connects to not just hard work and family, but now it connects to experimentation, trying new things. Because check this transition out, it's so bomb. Because gefilte fish is everywhere. In some cases, gefilte fish has meant testing different locations of bins to minimize food waste in a school with no cafeteria. Or researching how biofortification can create an allosteric inhibitor, reducing the release of ethylene, thus increasing the shelf life of produce. Geeky language alert. This is what I call geeky language. It's when you know some stuff about some stuff and you kind of weave it in subtly. I'm just doing this, right? And, and it gives us a sense that he's got this quality of intellectual curiosity, okay? It also gives us insight into the things he knows about. So now he's woven in another thing that he knows a lot about, which is like the science behind how biofortification works. You see how this works? So this is just one possibility. I'm, I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Well, you know what? I will, you know, let me, let me, Gregory's saying the fish is so good. Let me just go ahead and finish it because otherwise you'll be like, what, why didn't you finish the essay? The lessons I learned through food aren't just limited to traditional meals though. For the past five years, I've sold Otter Pops, a type of popsicle I love, I used to grow up on these. Those are those frozen things you throw in the freezer at Spokane's annual race. Every year my business grows. I hire new employees. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm a leader, leadership, to manage new stands throughout the course to sell thousands of pops. But while my popsicle empire expands, now again, notice he's under the, he's still under the larger umbrella of food. Now that's the great thing about an elastic topic like this. You can connect it to pretty much anything. But just to go back, what's making this essay stand out is the specific details that he's using, otter pops. While my popsicle empire expands, nobody else is gonna say that in their essay. One thing remains true. I take a break amid the chaos to eat my own otter pops. Right, you see where he's going with this? It's the same reason I play volleyball with friends after a long week of school and swim in the river with my football teammates after we finish conditioning. I take tremendous pride in these things. In fact, I find them necessary. So what would you call this value? You know, rest, celebrating yourself, you know, taking a break. These are all things important, especially for a student, you know, who works hard. And when I cook, I transform a part of raw earth into raw culture. What? This is called insight. This is the third quality of a great personal statement. So we got core values. We've got some vulnerability. And now we've got some insight. Insight is the answer to the question, so what? And hopefully it's an answer that surprises us. Why do you cook? I cook and transform a part of raw earth into raw culture. So now food is connecting to culture. Preparing steak enables me to remember my great grandfather. While eating it reminds me of its destruction of the environment. There's nice opposites there, some, con some like conflict, which is cool. This is how I understand the world. I cook to discover myself. I eat to learn about the world around me. But we become a product of the industrial food system, leading us to believe food is just another commodity and rendering us unable to identify that it exists at the seed of our very identity. This is why I want to study anthropology and public policy. Surprise! Did you see that coming? No, but kind of yes. I'll tell you how he did that in just a minute. To restore the bond between humans, food, and culture, and to create the policies that will ensure those who are food insecure have the same opportunity to do so themselves. I have so much left to eat in this world, so much to change, so much to create, and even more to impact. I'm hungry. See what he did there? I love that. Let me show you the values. I'm gonna show you those four qualities again. The values. So notice that these different, you know, each of these different paragraphs shows a different value. So finish your ribs shows determination. Family notes on the tablecloth is showing us vulnerability. Gefilte fish is experimentation. Otter pops is like taking the time, rest. Cooking is about family again and environmental impact, okay? And these are kind of like, almost you can almost imagine these like mini movies. So one thing that you can do today, tonight, is to start thinking about, okay, if I were to write on this topic, what are the specific examples, that they, like the not the movie, like the whole scene, but like the snapshot, finish your ribs, the phrase, right? And then he's got tons of insight. He answers so what and so many times. Vulnerability. The fourth one, which we're not gonna really get into today is craft. You clearly see that these revises over several drafts. That's what makes it lovely. All right, so that's one example of just a nice way to turn this particular, oh, so someone's asking what prompt is you responding to? So I'm not big on prompts. I'm big on helping you find your story, figure out what that story is, and then look at the common app prompts and go, well, which one of these kind of goes the best? And if none of them fit, just use topic of your choice because it doesn't really matter.
Okay. So you don't need to focus too much on prompts. In fact, I think it's not the best place to start because it gets you focused on like, what do they want? And I have to answer the prompt for my personal statement. Don't worry about it too much. Okay. Another example, actually, let's do another exercise. All right. I want you to make a list. Take out your trusty pen um, or your trusty fingers. Take out your trusty fingers. And I want you to um, give me, I want you to give me a list of all the identities that you can claim. What are some different ways that you identify? So, and the one way to think about this, like, so I'll give you some examples. Some ways to identify as a father. I identify as a teacher, as a counselor. I identify as a writer. I identify as a lover of words. I identify, those were kind of the same thing, but I'm just brainstorming right now. I identify as a, um, uh, a, a someone who loves to sing in the shower, but doesn't isn't amazing at singing in public. Uh, that's so weird. And another way to think about this is like, what are the communities that you're a part of? Okay. So think about communities. So make a list right now. There's as many identities as you can think of. I, so you don't have to write about what you want to study in the future. I'll show you an example in just a second where the student didn't do that. Keep going with your long list, Alana. As many identities as you can think of. I'll share with you the, I'll, I'll show you how you get access to the essay at the end. So don't ask me again. As many identities as you can think of. Think of identities in terms of things you like, things that you're good at, things you do. Here we go. Manuela has got some sister, teacher, leader, dance captain, friend. Great. Keep going. I'm, the, I'm an oldest sibling. That's a, uh, an identity that I would claim. Keep going. See if you can see if you can make your list such that it would never match somebody else's list because there are not because like single ones would match, but like the combination of those wouldn't match somebody else's. So keep going as many as you can think of. And then I'm going to show you how this turns into a personal statement. Ooh, protector. I like that one, Josh. That's cool. If you want to do flaws too, that's fine. <laughs> nice, Miles. Genius. Ooh, I love these, Lior. Cartoon watcher, big sleeper scientist, Middle Eastern slash North African. Awesome. Kendrick Lamar fan. Give me a bunch, Francois. Rick. Hi, Rick. Gemini born in the year of the monkey, which describes me to a T. I love it. I didn't know you were a Gemini. Musician, youngest daughter, friend, Jewish, Hispanic. These are awesome. All right. So how the heck does this turn into a personal statement? Let me show you another example. I'm going to click over here. So, okay. So another way that you could potentially write your personal statement is by choosing one or several of your identities. So maybe you pick one identity and you're like, you have a natural mom vibe and your essay, and you can brainstorm it kind of in a similar way where you basically put like mom vibe, you know, and you give different values that, you know, in different scenarios where you express your natural mom vibe, right? So here we go. Uh, or, you know, you identify as queer, but you take the word queer to mean lots of different things, right? And you can connect those to different values. Okay, so let me just give you a quick example. Another student, I sorry, and before I jump into the example, other students, give a variety of identities, you know? So for example, the student's essay read, my social media profile reads, angry brown girl, feminist singer, meme lover. So each of those is gonna become a paragraph in her essay, right? An advanced option, which we're not gonna get into right now, is you can weave two identities together. So like maybe you have an identity as a nerd and a geek, but you feel like those are different in important ways. And you weave back and forth in the essay between this identity and that identity. Here's an example essay. I am Mexican. The sound of frying empanadas and the smell of burning peppers. My mother calling me mi vida and my relatives kissing my cheek. Running but never hiding from the dreaded chancla and always responding with muy bien y tú. Childhood vacations to Puebla and Cancun. Swimming in the ocean, playing in the sand. Feeling the need to be good at cross country. Feeling the need to be able to endure spicy. Those are all me. I'm Chinese. The utter preference for using chopsticks in every scenario. And the unhealthy craving for rice with every meal. 
the sharing of every dish placed on the center turntable. Hot pot for celebration and tea eggs of all things is a favorite dish. My father's musical, can, can you see the values here? You spotting them? Again, core values, vulnerability, insight, craft. That's what we're looking for. My father's musical Cantonese conversations with my grandparents and their constant inquiry asking how is school, being named after the dragon for strength and living for three years in Shanghai, the constant pressure to get good grades, my father's desire for me to become a doctor and the never ending, how are you so bad at math? You're Asian. Those are all me. I'm American, a citizen with the freedom to vote, the freedom to speak my mind and the representation by all the cultures and countries of the world, shopping sprees at Target and a constant diet of fast foods full acceptance of the consumer society and a rather unhealthy addiction to social media and technology, going to football games on Friday nights and watching Netflix on Saturday nights, always watching my weight, always looking at others, always wishing, always wanting for more. You see how he's bringing in vulnerability without naming explicitly, this is a huge challenge I faced, you know, always watching my weight, like vulnerability in four words, y'all. And can anybody identify with this? So just to zoom back and what the student's doing, they're choosing lots of specific details to encapsulate what do these identities mean to them? What do they look like in their real life? And what I love about this one is that he's using short sentences to pack in more information. So we get a little collage for each of these identities. There's something else kind of magical that's happening that's drawing us in, which I'll get to in just a second. Those are all me. I'm Catholic. Sunday mornings always spent at church. The private Catholic middle and high schools, each with masses for special occasions, baptism, Eucharist, and confirmation, praying before each meal and saying, go away in the name of Jesus to nighttime horrors, theology class, and realizing there's so much more to religion than faith, having something to believe in, questioning what you believe in, turning to God when I see the horrors in the world and getting no response. Those are all me. I'm homosexual, an unusual obsession with fashion and clothing. Watching Game of Thrones, not for Daenerys or Circe, but for Jon Snow and Jaime. Seeing Love, Simon for the first time and crying at least five times. Always conscious, always thinking before talking. Going to an all-boys school. Dealing with gay being the go-to expression for displeasure. Being called a faggot when I act gay. Fear of my parents finding out. Those are all me. I'm Jonathan K. Long Ang. I love reading and I'm addicted to fan fiction. I have three siblings and love my two dogs more than anything in the world. I can't eat spicy food and I have the biggest sweet tooth. I play League of Legends in soccer. I'm a Marvel geek and theater nerd. My friends call me Jenga. My teammates call me Jeng. My teachers call me Mr. Eng. I'm Mexican. I'm Chinese. I'm American. I'm Catholic. I'm gay. I'm all of this and more. And most of all, I'm me. My identity is not a singular ident entity, but a conglomeration of experiences, beliefs, and origins. This is my identity. This is me. <laughs> I always cry when I read that essay. Um, what do y'all think of this? I'm curious. Um, what's what's your feedback? Uh, here are some things that I really love about it. Actually, I'll just, there happen to be below the essay. So I see so many core values here, right? Culture, family, faith, intellectual curiosity, social justice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many insights right? And, and, and into like how this person sees the world, you know, having something to believe in, questioning what you believe in. Like that's shows that and I've written this here. So apologies for reading what I'm just, it's on the screen, but like that you can have contrasting truths. Like you can have something that you believe in and you can also question it at the same time. Like that's pretty mature vulnerability that's in there. And it's really well crafted. You can tell he revised this over several drafts. Um, you love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it too. There's, I mean, so one, the thing that I want to say that the student is doing is he's awakening all five senses. So check this out. It's not just like, you know, visual, right? Like I see the things you can smell, you can taste, you can hear, look at that opening paragraph, right? The sound of frying empanadas and the smell of burning peppers. Like immediately we're like, you know, it, they're in the kitchen or wherever it's being cooked. And he conjures these images. My mother calling me, mi vida, and my relatives kissing my cheek. And if you've been around or in, you know, uh, Mexican culture, Latin American culture, where I grew up, maybe I'm identifying it too because I grew up in Latin America. Like, I'm like, oh, yes. You know, and I grew up in Miami too. So like, I'm right, right there. Muy bien, y tú? Um, so these details are part of, and so one, they're visual and, you know, they're using all five senses, but also they're super specific. And that's part of what draws us in. Okay. These aren't the only ways to write your essays. What we talked about are like two ways. I don't have to get, get in time to get into all of them today, but you've got the something that you love or know a lot about. 
And then you've got these identities, these different identities. Either of these can work. There's no like right or wrong way. These are both beautiful ways to write. Some other possibilities, I'm just gonna name these briefly and I'll, I'll talk to you about, you know, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll share more of those in a, in a future session, but it could be that you also find your personal statement just based on objects. And each object, for example, in your room that relates to different memories or moments or values, right? Could make up your personal statement. Or maybe you've got a skill or a superpower that you've developed, right? Where it's like art making or listening or mentoring. That could be the thing you put at the top of your page and connect to different values. Or if you want, if you have a career in mind, it could be that your career and how you've developed all these awesome skills, qualities, values that are gonna serve you in that future career could work. It could be that you've got a place that you identify as home, right? So it's like, maybe you've got something specific, like the weight room is like a place that you find home and that connects to different sides of you. Or there, maybe there are lots of different homes and each of those shows a different side of you. The thing that we're looking for is, it, well, two things we're looking for. We're looking for something that's a little bit more elastic and a little bit more uncommon if possible. The more uncommon and elastic your topic is, the more likely it's gonna be to, to one, be easy to write and two, to stand out. So the, if it's elastic, you're gonna be able to connect to lots of values and it can help you, you know, basically have lots of off ramps, things that you can weave in other sides of yourself. And if it's more uncommon, then, then it's not gonna be the 1,000th, you know, basketball essay that they've read, for example. Now, I'm not saying that you can't write a good essay on, an unco on a common topic. Like the essay on food, you know, the, the student who wrote that one, like that year I read like three different essays on food and all of them were very different. The key is gonna be to come in with those specific values to help you stand out, specific insights to specific moments, okay? And the, the, all the little different paths that I showed you all work with this exercise that I showed you. So it's like you write whatever the thing is at the top and then you see how many different values you can connect it to and each of those values is gonna you know, be basically a different paragraph in the essay. Does that make sense? I know, I'm, I'm kind of going fast. I'm kind of giving you like a crash course on how to write your personal statement. Now, this is for students who haven't faced challenges necessarily or have faced challenges but don't wanna write about them. There's another way of writing your personal statement um, that's called, that's basically on if you have faced challenges and you wanna write about those. And I don't have time to get into it today, but it's called the feelings and needs exercise. And it basically involves talking about the challenge you faced, the impact that it had on you, what you did about it, and what you learned. And we'll follow up with, with that resource. You can kind of work through that if you want to. Um, but that's for students who face challenges. Um, another thing that I said I would cover before Q&A is topics to maybe not talk about. Okay. So another method that you could use if you wanted to would be like uncommon extracurricular activities. Okay. Do -do 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 -do. So I so I wouldn't recommend writing about your extracurricular an extracurricular activity for the main topic for your personal statement. Just to give a quick example, Rick Diaz. If it's the Rick Diaz, I think it is. Who um you know who I'm not even going to say where you work, Rick. But um, college admission officers, there are certain topics that just come up all the time. Okay, and I'm going to give you a list of some of those in just a second. But a lot of times schools are asking for, hey, tell us about a particular extracurricular activity, okay? And if, they've, if they're asking about that, that's a great opportunity to write about that. There are so many other things you could write about for your personal statement topic, right? All, some of them are like on the left side of the screen. But here are some common extracurricular activity topics that I wouldn't necessarily recommend, or if you're gonna write about these, it, I'll just say that it's gonna be harder to stand out. And this is kind of like a dream killer moment where you're like, what? That's what I was thinking about writing about, Ethan. Look. If you want to write about that, you can go for it. Just make sure that you get as super specific as the students did in the two examples that I showed you. Okay. So these are some common topics, but the ones that I would say like that are, that I would avoid are like the big performance essay where like somebody's nervous, they're waiting backstage, you know, their knees weak, arms are heavy. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm quoting Eminem. The, the, and they're like getting ready to go up and then they're like realize, oh, I can't give this performance. And then they realize that they develop some measure of self-confidence. I wouldn't do that one, it's super common. The waiting in the wings essay is what my friend Laura Young calls it. Um, the big game essay is like, you know, it's down, it's bottom of the ninth, right? It's like, you know, two minutes left in the game and you've got the ball and it's like, do it's go time, right? Like, and then you win the game ultimately or you lose the game, but win in life. But the reader doesn't really care because what do they want to know about is what? Sing along with me, your skills, qualities, values, and interests, right? So um, 
it's just, and it's super common. Also the sports injury essay where it's like pop and you break something or twist something and then you lose the season, but you become the manager and you like support the team in other ways. Less popular probably this year due to COVID, unless you like hurt a thumb playing Fortnite or something. Uh, I don't know. What, what do you play? Um, now if it's just going to the chat box, it's going to be like vroom, vroom, clash of clans. Okay. Um, and then the mission trip essay, which is like you went, you were somebody of privilege and you went to a place and you saw or met some folks who have less money than you do. And you had a conversation with them and you learned a valuable life lesson that totally changed your Instagram feed. Right. Um, so I wouldn't recommend that topic either. Uh, and if you're going to choose a common extracurricular activity as your personal statement topic, I would recommend doing this. Let me show you a quick exercise for this. I would recommend take that values exercise. I'm packing in a lot right now. I hope you all are good. Okay. Yes, totally. There's a way that you can talk about a personal challenge without being the main topic of your essay. Bryce, did you notice in that essay that this is me essay that the student wove in those challenges in a subtle way, but it was really about his different identities. So here's how to brainstorm a, a, a more uncommon, here's how to stand out with a common topic. Take a look at the list, the values list again. And tr first try to brainstorm the cliche version of your essay. So like, let's say you've got dance, which is a pretty common topic. Well, what is everybody gonna say about dance? Or let's go super common, let's go like basketball. Everybody's gonna talk about discipline, hard work, perseverance, and it's not about me, it's about the team, right? So there we go, I'm getting, I'm getting some, some Eminem fans in the, in the crowd. All right, you can stop, you can stop, you're gonna distract people. So brainstorm the cliche version of your essay. Right. What is the basketball essay? It's discipline, hard work, perseverance, teamwork, leadership. And now what are some uncommon values that you wouldn't normally associate with basketball? In fact, throw this in real quick. Throw this into the chat box. I keep looking for my water and it's, it keeps not being here. What, what are some uncommon connections? Wait, things that even if you don't play basketball, that you can connect to basketball. Throw them into the chat box. I'm just looking at these right here. What about something like belonging or connection or efficiency or equity or adaptability. Now it would take creativity. Yes, Fiona, thank you. So could it be that your basketball essay ends up showing some more uncommon sides of yourself? And it would take a minute to be like, to fight, to connect all these family. Yes. Right. Laughter, respect. Great. So this is the game we're playing. Some of y'all are picking up on this. Some of these va these values are more elastic than you think, and you could connect them potentially to a common topic. But here's the advice I want to give you. If you've got something that's somewhat common, I want to encourage you to come up with somewhat more uncommon topics potentially through some of these other you know processes that I mentioned. All right. Let me give, let me see what else to, to cover, but topics to potentially avoid. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me tell, let me give me two minutes to tell you about this course that I'm teaching that's coming up. Um, the quick commercial for my course, it's, I'm not, it's pay what you can, by the way. So if anybody's like, what, um, here, let me tell you about this real quick. So I've got this course that's coming up. It's called how to write a personal statement. It's coming up in June, actually really soon. Um, June 8th to June 29th. And basically we're going to do sessions like this. You're going to be watching some stuff and then you're going to come here and listen to me do this and analyze your essays. Um, week one, we're going to do brainstorming week two. We're going to do outlining and writing. Week three, we're gonna talk about revising. Week four is refining. So the idea is that by the end of the month, you've got your personal statement done, a pretty solid draft, okay? You'll see, on the, and we'll actually, will you just throw in the link, um, Stevie, to this in the chat box so folks can see this, but you can click the course syllabus and you'll see exactly what we cover on each day, um, all the things. And there are two different times that it's offered. So hopefully one of those works for you. Start writing today. Um, and then the second one, like that course is gonna roll right into uh, how to write your application and supplemental essays. So we're gonna talk about basically every other part of the process. Let me just scroll down to like the the, the step-by-step, the, all the things that we're gonna cover. So like module one, I'm gonna talk to you about how to basically do brainstorming activities that are gonna save you a lot of time. Um, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna play something called the overlapping game where you can figure out how your prompts overlap and how to write super essays, which is like essays that work for lots of different prompts. We're gonna talk about the activities list. So besides the personal statement, which is 650 words, and um, you know, is basically what you'll spend the most time on. You've got to create an activities list, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about on Thursday. You've got it, which is your brag sheet, additional information section where you can put all kinds of different stuff in there. And you might have a why us essay if you're applying to certain schools, like why this college. 
you might have an extracurricular act activity essay. And then I'm going to get into a bunch of different supplemental essays. So there are tons of modules. I've got like, you know, 40 different example essays. Maybe it's 30, something like that. They're starting next week. You're probably wondering, not next week, sorry. They're starting in two weeks. You're like, how much does this cost? Y'all, this is pay what you can. What does that mean? Pay what you can means whatever you want to pay, you can pay that. Okay. So I'll follow up with more info on that, but I'd love for you to join. It's a, it's a party. We'll have a couple hundred of us. It'll be fun. I'll be revising or reviewing like lots of live essays on the, on the call and stuff. And um, yeah, it'll be fun. All right. Let's see what else we got. What questions do we have? Oh, let me go to that cool Google doc that Stevie had. Is it controversial to talk about faith in a college essay? Okay. Good question, Jacqueline. So it can be, it's one of those topics that can potentially be stigmatized because it's like, if the person they're reading, it doesn't share your faith, then are they going to, is there going to be some friction? But again, do this exercise, like put whatever your faith is here and then brainstorm different values that it connects to because we might not share the same faith, Jacqueline, but the values of whatever, you know, what does faith mean for, to me, faith is like connection. Faith is like self-care. Faith is, is community. Like all these values I can get down with. So even though we might not share the same faith, I'm, I can get down with those values, right? So that's a way to talk about faith potentially in your personal statement, okay? Um, is talking about your identity overdone? Well, Sydney, you've got many identities, right? So like being Asian American, for example, it, it's one of those that it's like, it's somewhat common, but if you can find specific moments, details, examples, um, then I think it could be interesting, you know, and it's just, it's just, it's a matter of how you do it. Um, is it one identity you want to focus on or you want to focus on multiple identities? Oh, by the way, cause folks asked the thing that I showed you the course, that's when I'm going to, that's where this thing that I showed you, um, is, is, and sorry, I totally was like, I'll tell you when, the, when I'm going to show that. But basically this thing right here, which walks you through like the whole personal statement, this is what, this is the curriculum for the course. So anyway, that's where that is. And again, it's pay what you can. So don't feel like, oh, he's like putting this behind a paywall. Well, yeah, kind of, but it's, again, pay what you can. All right. But -um -bum -bum. What about my best friends, the topic? Eh, maybe. It's hard. I mean, because sometimes writing about other people, Jack, can lead the essay to be about things that are not you. So again, do this exercise, test it, see if you can connect with lots of core values. Is talking about sports cliche? Yes. So our essay should have multiple mini stories instead of a long story. It can, Anushka. We didn't have time to talk about how to write the other one. I just wanted to give you the possibility because some sometimes students are like mind blown by the possibility of doing multiple mini stories like, like that, like those examples. Would writing about having trouble with being vulnerable be a cliche topic? I don't know if it's this. I mean, Annika, is that the strongest way to demonstrate your skills, qualities, values, and interests? So anybody who's asking, should I write about X? Ask yourself, is X the best way to demonstrate my skills, qualities, interests, and values? I think there are probably other possibilities for you. So I'd say keep brainstorming. What if you're not completely sure you want to do in the future? I see it doesn't matter because you notice in that this is me essay, he just, you know, gave a lot of different sides of who he was and there's no connection to the career. It's fine. You know, it's fine. When it comes to the provided prompts, how do we not double dip when there's a fine line between two or more prompts and your personal experience or topics? So this is part of what we'll strategize when we're talking about the supplemental essay. Sorry, I'm scratching my back. You ever just need to like, like move up against something? Oh, so good. Okay. Um, so sometimes, yeah, you'll have a prompt that's like, tell us your story, right? Which is like kind of the broad common app prompt. And you'll have some supplemental essay that's kind of similar. And so what you'll want to do, this is the short version of this Priyanka, but it's basically like figure out what are the different sides of yourself that you want to show. And I'm going to walk you through a bunch of exercises on the course to like how to figure out what those different sides are. And part of it is like the, I love, I know, and the different identities. Cause it could be that like this identity is like the main star of this essay. And like this other identity is like the star of this other essay. So it's like, here's my food. You know, for example, that student who wrote that essay was like, here's my food and connection to family. And there's some like mentions of like extracurricular activities, but his separate supplemental essay, which was for Stanford, he wrote about being, you know, on the football team. And so that, you know, basically you just need to make sure you kind of think of it this way, Priyanka, this might be useful. It's like, think about your essays as being different colors. So if the food essay is red and then your football essay is blue, right? You don't want to be like food. And then like, here's another thing about food. <laughs> so it's like light red and then like dark red. But let me tell you about how I care about food. When you say uncommon, does it have to be an uncommon topic itself or an uncommon type of something? Like I do South Indian classical music, a very specific genre. Could I use it for my topic? Yeah, for sure. But so yes. Um, but I wouldn't recommend necessarily 
Yeah, yeah. So try it, Treya. One of the things that I want to talk to you about is multiple coming up with multiple ideas, coming up with two or three ideas based on these different paths. So the, the more ideas you can come up with, especially early on, the better, because you can kind of combine them later. Or like maybe you're writing about South Indian classical music and then you're also writing about this other side of yourself. And then you're like, ooh, I can bring them together and it's going to make my South Indian classical music uh, a little bit more different. But I think both are important. So an uncommon topic can be great, but also just uncommon connections like we saw in the food essay can be great. Do we have to respond to the prompts? Can we write, talk about that? Isn't it very difficult to write a good collage or mosaic essay? I find it actually harder to write a really good challenges-based essay. Why, Ajia? Because most students haven't faced the kinds of challenges that are going to make really awesome personal statements. A lot of times, students are like forcing challenges. And you're either writing about a challenge or you're not, right? And so if you're not writing about a challenge, you want to demonstrate skills, qualities, values, and interests. And how do you do that? You talk about like the robotics club and how, you know, your involvement, you know, taught you more efficiency, maybe, but I think it's, it can be more interesting to bring in other sides of yourself. Um, I'm not totally biased against robotics clubs essays. It's just somewhat common. Could someone think these two essays are just too over the top? Trying to hit a long list of values versus highlighting just one or two. Maybe read. Yeah, totally. It could be a preference thing. You might feel that way. How much should you show off? I always feel like trying to subtly flex is too much. It's uh, it's a preference thing, Mia. So like some people are going to be really comfortable with that and try and like find so many ways to subtly flex. But for other folks, they're like, that's what this whole process is about. So I actually think that this process is that when you're demonstrating your skills, qualities, values, you could overtly do it, which is what you're supposed to do in your activities list. But in your personal statement, you want to kind of mention some of those things, but you want to connect them to values because that's the stuff that you care about. Does it matter if we don't follow the prompts? It matters on the supplemental essays, Mariana. So for the Why Us essay, you darn well better answer the prompt. For the Stanford essays, darn well better answer those prompts. But for the personal statement, I mean, just pick topic of your choice. What if you don't want to talk about personal challenges, but you do want to convey them to colleges? So that's where supplements or your additional info section can come in. Does working on aircraft, is working on aircrafts common? Mm. On the scale of one to 10, I would put it in terms of like commonness. Um, Two, it's like three. Uh, sorry, that didn't clarify. So un most uncommon. So it's it's not like five, which would be like right in the middle, which would be like uh, chess is like slightly more common. But like robotics would be like seven or eight. Basketball would be like 10 common. So it's like kind of like three or four maybe, just in my experience with the 10,000 essays that I've read. Rick, you might have a different opinion. Um, is there a way I can talk about? Uh, yeah, I answered that. Would make the admissions committee want me to go to their college. Okay. What about what he said in his essay? Oh, we'd have to go back. Would make the admissions committee want him to go to their college though. So my answer to that, Raven, is all of those values, the insights, all of those things would make me want that student in my, in my college. So the values and the insights is my answer to that question. So you're basically writing about yourself. Yes, Kara. What is a personal statement? Are personal statements the same as the big essay you have to write to apply for college? Totally. Yeah, sorry. I sometimes skip the basics. Your personal statement is your college essay. It's the one page thing. It's about 650 words or less. And it's that. That's what we've been talking about. If you weren't able to come to the personal essay writing, we'd still be able to write a good personal statement on our own. Of course. But also they're recorded. So <laughs> you know, if you can't come live, you can just you know watch the recordings. When do you think your college essay should be done and finalized for high school juniors? Over the summer is an ideal situation. You know, if you can get as much number the summer, that would be awesome. Um, let's see. One thing, by the way, we're almost at time. So um, let me do this. I want to do a quick giveaway. Um, for those of you who are still on, oh, there are a bunch of you still on. Cool. And yes, the course is via Zoom. It's via basically via this platform, via Webinar Jam. I want to give away a free book. In fact, let's give away two free books. Let's do a college essay essentials, CV, and let's do a college admission essentials. And here's the quiz. By the way, I can't, we're not going to do any more questions just because we're over time. I will answer the rest of the questions. We'll stay for like five minutes more. But let's do a book giveaway. So uh, first question for the quiz, whoever answers it first gets a free book. Um, and the question is, and we'll just mail it to you. You have to be domestic because it's too expensive for us to send it internationally. I'm sorry. The first question is, what are the four qualities of a great personal statement as I identified them earlier? Four qualities of a great personal statement. Who can name them first? And I'm going to come up with a second question now. Okay, got it. The second question is, what are the two different montage paths that I talked about? There were two, there were three exercises we did. What were the different paths that I described? Did you see what they were named? It was in the, the left side. Uh, 
No. Those are the things you want to show, skills, qualities, values, and interests. But what are the four qualities? There we go. Madison, you got it. Madison wins. Madison, email stevie at collegeessayguy.com and be like, I won the free book and just send your address. Core values, vulnerability, insight, craft. Yes. The second one was what were the two paths? You guys all remember the skills, qualities, values, interest thing. What were the two paths that I talked about? Anybody find it? Let's see. I'm scrolling up, scrolling up. OMG, there are so many things demonstrated. Oh my gosh, I'm going to lose this. I'm going to see if I can catch the first person who got it. There were two paths and they were, um, I love and I know, and there was one more. There it is. Sonali, you got it. Sonali, email stevie at collegeessayguy.com, identity and the I love, I know path. So those are the two of the seven paths that we're going to talk about on the course. Okay, awesome. Cool. Let's do the rest of the questions. Braden, I'd like to know if you would advise me against submitting an application which contains, among other things, all the lyrics sung by, I am the very model of a modern major general. Should you include all the lyrics? I wouldn't include all the lyrics. It's a big, I don't really waste your word limit. As the information which the modern major general purports to possess, I in fact do possess, thirein making an accurate reflection of myself. This is a cool topic, Braden. This is super nerdy and I love it. And I say nerdy because I think you know a lot about this. And I think you can probably connect to many different sides of you. So it's elastic and it's uncommon. Boom. That's a great essay topic. Why I am a modern major general. I love it, Braden. This is such a great topic. Uh, would an essay application reader find it amusing or not? I, I hope so. It's going to take some time to revise it, but you throw it through this exercise. What are the different values that you can connect it to? Do not put all the lyrics in there. Just give us little snippets in the paragraphs. Yes. I love it. Um, someone asked, is writing about a family death cliche? There's the exercise that I mentioned, the feelings and needs exercise that can help you figure out if that's a good topic to write about or not for you. Is it common? Yes. Cliches are not in the topic. Cliches are in how you pull it off. Now, you know what I mean by that? So like with food is not a cliche topic or not. It's a common topic, but it's, it's on how you execute it. So if the food essay would be like, I love food. It connects me to my family and it's so delicious. Like that's, you know, so it, it, it's all on how you tell it. And that's, that's what it takes a little bit of time. But in terms of the feelings and needs exercise, it's going to walk you through six questions that you can answer and it'll help you figure out if it's a good personal statement topic. Uh, Stella, should I avoid mentioning things that could be taboo like rehab or mental illness? How vulnerable can I get? Great question, Stella. So it's tricky. And one of the things that I want to invite you to do is, is to, you know, talk to your counselor about this because it could be that some of these things could be things that you could put in your additional information section. And that's basically the additional section on your common app that's going to be like 650 words on pretty much whatever you want. And you can do a specific description of some of the you know challenges that you faced. But the specific, the, the short answer to this is like, if you can just bullet point the challenges, the effects on you, what you did about it and what you learned, it'll probably create a short thing that you can put in your additional info. And then you can write your personal statement on whatever else you want. But I want you to brainstorm multiple topics, Stella, because it could be a good personal statement topic, but I want you to See if there are other ways to demonstrate your skills, qualities, values, and interests that will show your core values, insight, vulnerability, and craft. Is it compulsory to talk about your major in the personal statement? No, you totally don't have to. Some schools are even going to ask you to do that. And so if you talk about it in your personal statement and then you have a separate essay that's like, why do you want to major in this? Then it's going to be redundant. So then you don't even want to do it. Cassandra is a mix of being a car enthusiast, Latina, an activist, a good mix for an identity essay. I love it, Cassandra. I want to read that essay. I want to know what are those different sides of you that it connects with. Okay. All right. Ba -dum -bum -bum. Does the writing process differ for international students? Not necessarily. I'm sorry. Now I'm answering extra questions. Okay. I'm going to do two more. It doesn't necessarily differ. And Francois, stay on the email list. If you guys aren't on the email list, stay on the email list because I'm going to share with you basically throughout the whole season, I'm going to share with you a whole bunch of resources for pretty much all parts of the process. Let me just show you really quick how to sign up. I think you're already on it if you like are signed up for this webinar, but if you're not, go to the homepage. I'll just throw it in the chat box and sign up at the very bottom. Whoop, sorry, that made some of you sick. Uh, your email address uh, and put your name in and then you'll get notified. I've got a whole bunch. We've got a whole bunch of resources. We've got this whole incredible hub of resources that we're getting ready to release. That's basically for specifically for international students and in particular for international students who need money potentially to go to college. So if that's you, Get on the email list. We're going to reveal that in, a, in like a week or two. Oh, the other thing. Sorry, I'm going to make a quick pitch. I know I'm 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 taking too much of your time, but I'm I'm going to be starting like starting really soon. I'm going to be posting weekly on YouTube, like starting in like about a week. 
Um, so if y'all would do me a quick solid and follow me on YouTube, <laughs> I'd like never do this, but follow, if you'll follow me on YouTube, you'll get and hit the notification bell. You'll get notified when new videos come up. So I'm going to be posting like tons of free resources and stuff. Um, okay. Last question. And then I'm gonna go drink some water. Okay. Sydney is the essay format you went over one that does well with really competitive schools or hard to tell. It does. It totally does. This, this montage style of like, you know, and I don't like to say where students got in, but I'll just say that the students that wrote those essays, because I don't want students to be like, oh, if I write that, I'm going to get into like sessions of school. But those students were both accepted at highly selective schools. So yes, totally. Um, I mean, you can get into a great school with a different, all kinds of essays, a great challenges based essay. I'm having fun. I kind of want to, yeah, like, and subscribe. Totally, Prakash. I know I'm totally doing that. Um, all right. I want to spend a couple more minutes because I'm having fun with y'all. Um, is talking about AAPI and BLM identity cliche. Again, it's not like, it, while it might be somewhat common, Basamati, it's not about how, it's not about the topic. It's about how you pull it off, right? So it could be that if you've got some interesting things to say about those, about, you know, AAPI and BLM identities, give me specific details. Take me into your world. Show me how your AAPI and BLM identity essay is different from any other student who's writing on those. Specific details. Use all five senses. All right. Um... Some people are asking, still asking, like, how, how personal can we be? On a scale of one to 10, don't, I wouldn't get level 10 vulnerable. I would keep it in like the six to seven range. So if you're going to reveal something that someone's going to be like, oh, like make sure that that, whatever that oh is, that you're bringing it back and talking about what you did about it and what you learned through the experience. Because just revealing like, you know, taboo things that might shock people, that's not how you get into college. You don't get into college because horrible things happen to you, right? It's how you metabolize the experience. Word limits like 650-ish. Tian, I, I love that you're here as a sophomore. It's, I mean, it's it's not too early to start writing in general. Like if you want to just write, Tian, and, and you're, you're inspired, like go for it. But your, your topic's probably going to change over the years. So, I mean, I've, I've had students in workshops do like awesome statements that they kept. But so, I, I mean, I, if you'd like writing, I think fine, go for it. But I don't want you to like spend your whole high school thinking all about you know, like everything is like college application focused because the time to write is like right now. Like this is the, this is why I do this workshop right now. This is like the ideal time to start your personal statement. Cool, Lior, I'm glad you felt good. Ba -dum -bum -bum. Hannah, can you email me or someone with our personal statements for feedback? If you're on the course, I'm going to be reviewing a ton of essays. Um, you're like the Heimler of college admissions. It's awesome. I think that's a compliment. I appreciate it. Good food verb, yeah. I plan on writing about my pet snails. Could I make the introductory portion from the perspective of my snail and relate that to their perspective? Yes, you could, Ben. Make sure that your ending isn't so long that you're like spending all this time being clever and you're detracting from the main point of the personal statement, which is what? Skills, qualities, values, interests. So make that opening, yeah, write it and then shorten it to like just getting in because it's like, okay, cool, this guy's clever. We can get that in a couple sentences and then boom, get into like showing us different sides of you. How abstract can an essay be? I've seen essays as a theater script where different characters represent different core values. Maybe it's hard to do well because people just like, you know, Ben's idea. Is it Ben? Um, the other, Braden, whoever said that about the snail, Ben, yeah. Just like Ben said, it's like, if you're trying to show, if you're trying to be clever, you know, I, I would say like on the scale of like poetry, which is like cleverness, creativity to like information, you want to kind of be a little bit more over here. Sometimes students try to spend too much time being clever and we don't get the meat and potatoes of the essay. Or if you're a vegetarian, the veggies and potatoes of the essay. Okay, or the combos and Doritos of the essay. That's not very healthy. Um, so make sure that whatever format you choose, like I did a webinar last week, which if you didn't see it, that's the one on the match lighters student. So, oh, match lighters, my bad. I, so there's, there's all these things I wanna talk about. If you, were an, if you identify as a low income student and you would like essay help, Go to this website and apply right now. Uh, we've got 650 counselors that are standing by waiting to be paired with you. So fill out the match letters application. Let me just show it to you real quick. So this is basically, I had students asking me starting like six years ago for free essay help. And they were, and this girl was like, I just need someone to light a little match. And I was like, oh, I, I, you know, I would help some students for free, but I couldn't help every student. So we set up this match letter scholarship. You know, it's basically gives free application help to high achieving low income students. Okay. And we have a bunch of counselors who've applied, who've worked with us over the years. We pair you with one of them. You get free essay help. Okay. It's like four to 10 hours, depending on the counselor's availability. 
So you, in the application, you need, you need to be U.S. resident. Um, you know, you have to have a 3.0 GPA. Your family has to, you know, you got to qualify for free reduced lunch, have an, a test waiver, basically prove that you are low income and you got to be motivated because there's some work to be done. But you can submit your application here. You can do this right now, okay? So if that's interesting to you, I'm going to put it in, I'm going to just spam the chat box with this. <laughs> I want to get a button that has one of those like, one of those like air horns that they have in clubs. Um, so anyway, I want, I want y'all to apply to this. Okay. Um, the application is available. What are you talking about? Let's submit an application. Yeah, it is available. Hold on. Let me just prove to you that it's available. I'm going to have that in my head now. Okay. Submit an application. Click it. Watch. Boom. There it is. Names, all the things. There you go. So it's available. Okay. Paula, if you're not a U.S. resident, stay on the email list because we're going to share with you a ton of resources. All right. I think that's it. I think that's it. I've, I've gone too long. I'm going to, I'm going to cut it off. I would love to see some of y'all on the course. When I say pay what you can, I mean that y'all, I would rather you take the course and pay whatever and join me half, you know, then, then be like, Oh, it's too expensive. It's not too expensive for anybody. Okay. So that's my pitch. I'll see y'all on Thursday. We're going to do this again, but we're going to do this not with personal statements with different parts of the application. I'll probably talk just this fast and I will not forget my water that time. All right. That's it. I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks y'all. And uh, I'll see you in either two days or I'll see you on the course. You're welcome, Sydney. Thanks for your thanks. And um, I'll see y'all real soon. All right. Bye.